Does that mean we're live? We're live. We keep... <sighs> yeah, we're live. Good. Well, we used to have a tweet here, so then I have nothing. Uh, Tweety. I, I she, have to she, guess we're live. She's right, still on guys. vacation. <laughs> so welcome to Acrylic Painting Monday with Ginger Cook and uh, my husband, John Little, who's on the uh, our camera guy. And uh, we're bringing you a really fun tutorial today, acrylics, on simple ways to paint birch trees. And we're going to put them in a fall setting. And I've tried to make this really even though it doesn't look like a beginner tutorial i think if you are a beginner if you follow directions just don't go scampering off on your own <laughs> um you might be okay so just try to track with me and we're, we've got a limited amount of space on our computer to record this so i'm going to get right to it oh no goofing off today of, out of memory to do a long video so we're going to get right to it and i know you're excited about that so um while I'm welcoming the mods and telling you a little bit about the, the bunnies that you're seeing, let me just quit. C come on down to the palette, John. Una momento por favor. Mm -hmm. We're taking out the palette. There we and go. This is a 9 by 12 canvas, and I've just gridded it into a half and then... Um, fours. And then fours. One, two, three, four squares. Just a very simple grid. Uh, sometimes people will sit there. I had someone send me in a tutorial from my... Uh, for uh, personal art coaching just the other day, and they said, well, how did I do even though I didn't grit it? Well, I'm sure you're fine, <laughs> but, you know, why beat yourself up on the head and try to take, uh, scampering off again, T try to just, if you keep it in the grid and follow it, you're going to be, it's going to be so much easier, okay? So this is basically what I've, I've taken my printout, and I've gotten, and you can see this is halfway right here, this line right here, and halfway is where our, um, Pretty much where right like slightly below halfway is where our, our river ends right there. Do you see that? We do. But here's halfway. So slightly here is where um, pretty much where all the water begins. And this is for you, Missy. Keep it there and your river won't look like it's going uphill. All right. Now you'll notice in this little uh, little rectangle right here, right in here like this, we have like a little cutout like that, like a little cutout. Do you see that comes this way? And the, about halfway of that, we're just going to do that, yes? And then uh, come down below here. It's almost a straight line. See that? But we'll come out a little further because that's not good design. And we'll start back here in this corner. And we're going to say this is our bank here, all right? So that's what we know for sure. Now on this side, we'll come over this. If this was halfway of this, uh, this little area right here, we know that um, this little bank's coming here and about like that yes that's easy now where does it end here's halfway of this one right here so if that's that's about um, uh, just a little bit above this so we're gonna come here like this and say that our bank is zigzagging like this and connects to here see that and, it, and then it comes back here like that kind of curves back and so uh, then way back here, we have another indication there might be some land back here, like that. All right? So that's really all the drawing that's in here, except for a few trees. All right, okay? <laughs> the main subject. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's but <laughs> getting this right. And sometimes, and I want you to see something. Do you see the shadows along the bank? I when do. you're doing shadows, you only would see you wouldn't put the shadow on the top side you only put it on the bottom because that's what you'd see all right so don't don't be putting shadows on the top side of the bank all right just underneath yes okay so we know that and that's what we've got nine by twelve all right before now, we go too much further people are noticing your bunny phone they want to know the bunny going to be a lesson and we have bunny over on the side if you look at your Look at yeah. your screen so you can see we have the bunny picture there too. Oh yeah, there's the, the you can see our bunny flag. This is so cute, you guys. You can't believe how adorable this all is. Where did my flag go, John? Over on this side. My, oh, on my this queen side. Is. Yeah, here it is. Um, uh, let, me, let me bring the these. Door. These finally came. Where we well, these are in our store. Um, oh, I put it on you so you can hold it up next to you. Oh, he's putting it on me here. See, let's see my face. You see my bunny flag right here. And the, the Amazon sells these little stands for like $5. And uh, this is an original Ginger Cook painting of the bunny flag. We, got, we have some bunny t-shirts and everything. It's a new release. We're not doing tutorials on these, but we feel like this represents... Uh, the artists yes, within. Uh, who we are as artists, at least 
you know, I got a Boy Bunny too, but we haven't released him yet. I just love the fact that I have this on my phone. Let's see. You're back there. You're down. back here, <laughs> and it just fit my iPhone perfectly. Yeah, they're only available for iPhone right now. We haven't found a place to get them made for Androids. But I, I, I think it's really cute. It helps me find it. I, that made me feel very individual. And then um, my daughter likes the bunny flag, so but we have two sizes, and she's got one coming for her new home in yeah, uh, the other you, size is designed to hang on your house on a flagpole. A the bigger one, too. Yep. That's the small one that, you know, on a flag. And this is a little one. So, anyway, we just we want to share you that. With, share with those, you guys, with that. Uh, sometimes uh, we're trying to uh, do more interesting releases in our store. And the bunnies are what we're releasing uh, this month for August is our bunnies. And I've got bunny T-shirts and the... Um, bunny flag and the phone cover and was there anything else john that we did bunny yet that's all we got done so that's far. that's all we got done so far we okay? do we will be having an apron though yeah we're still working on the apron we might design. try to do some bunny cards at some point john but we haven't done that yet all right so let's talk about our 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 colors let's get back to work here people um and thank our mods as we're doing that and hope uh, liz clark feels better she's was under the weather but i want to hang out with judy and um and liz carson and uh luann and um and we've got Lynn from the Quebec office. Uh, Lynn from us. Quebec, and um, uh, there's not somebody else we're missing. Um, Lillian, Liz, Judy, Judy's uh, here. Uh, oh, Steffi. And Steffi's still here. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, shout out to you guys. Yes, so a, bunny, a bunny mug will be coming for sure. Yeah, Gotta and so if you think mug. of any other products you'd have like us to add to that, just let us know, please. We were thinking about a bunny t-shirt for, you know, kind of long sleeve t-shirt for winter. And if you yeah, think that would be something you'd like, uh, that would be good to know, too. Because it's, it's, an, it's, it's an interesting thing to be able to add those. All right, so then you can find those at fannywithginger.com uh, and just go to the store. All right, so we've got titanium white, cad yellow medium, cad yellow light, um, that's marigold. That's an if you could do it or not. Um, you could probably mix something with a little tiny bit of cad yellow medium and a tiny bit of, of, of cad red. Maybe a little magenta makes kind of a good marigold too. So you didn't have it. It's all right. Marigold is a little translucent. Um, yellow oxide. Cadmium orange. I love cadmium orange. I didn't, I, you know, I managed to go, you know, 50 years of painting without ever having it. But boy, now I have it. I just really <laughs> hate it when I don't have it. Uh, this is Payne's Gray. We want to use that. Payne's Gray is black and ultramarine blue, if you don't own that. Cad Red Medium, Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, and um, Burn Umber. Those are our colors. So, like um, anything what we do, we're going to start with the background. I'm going to take a pretty large brush like this, and I'm going to start with white paint. I do have a mixing palette that I can use, um, like this. Uh, well, that's not the one. John, I know John gave me one. No, what, what are you looking for? A mixing palette. Well, I guess that'll work. Can we use this? Let me see which one that is. Did, no. can, can we use that one? I guess, I don't know. That'll well, what mix colors up. you got in it? Well, it's got too many I've colors. I've got two, I got... And he gave me like all these palettes. All right, let's... Ah, mixing palette. All right, that's what we're going to use. All right, so let's start with white, okay? Let's start with white, please. And then I want a tiny bit of yellow oxide, like about 1%, maybe 2%, okay? Like that? 1% or 2%. 1% or 2%, like that. And can I mix it all up? And I want to come on here like that and go down and across. You can, any bright brush would work. You can dampen it, but don't make it wet. Um, it depends what brand of paint you're using. But I'm using Golden and Matisse, and um, I, or I use... Uh, um, Holbein, and they don't require a lot of paint. When I use Sennelier paint, I usually have to add a little bit more water. So if you're using one of those brands of paint, as you see, I'm out of color already. So white and a little bit of yellow oxide. Don't get, get, not try to get too tricky on you, right? Okay, like that. Just blend that in like that. Now, see, down and across, down and across, down and across. And the background color is just tan, all right? So that's my background color. So mostly this is light here. And um, nice, bright, happy, light background. Coming on right down in here like this. Scrape all that up. I'm pushing pretty hard, covering this. The background, the background is the, um, is it buff titanium? 
Yeah, but you could use just raw over and white. Just You need a light background. Just a light tan. Just a light tan background. doesn't really matter what that is. All right, now, what I want to do while this is still wet is I'm going to take uh, this paint still wet. I'm going to take about 1% thalo blue, which is like kryptonite, right? And I'm going to put some white paint with this. Okay? Takes a lot because it's mostly white. It's 99% white. Okay, now we'll come in here like that. I just barely want to see this blue. Do you see that? All right, now if you've got like a paper towel, which of course I wouldn't have a paper towel while I'm having a show. <laughs> Why on earth would anybody leave me any paper towels? Oh. We can't imagine. No, I'm not complaining. I'm just making an observation, yeah? All right, um, normally I would... All right, Where John's knocking everything over, but all right. So normally I would... Just wipe off the excess like that, okay, because this is wet. And then I'm just going to come in here like that and make a few little X's kind of in the middle, maybe up here in the corner, just uh, just sort of give you a hint that there might be some blue up in the sky, but not much. We're not painting the whole sky blue. All right. Now, as we come down here, we're going to add a little bit more paint right here like that into this area. Barely touch it. Let's say here's, oh, John found more paper towels. He's such a sweetheart, right? He's going, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now let's take a little bit of ultramarine blue with this color. Now, not much. Ultramarine blue is sort of the, uh, you can see it's a much different, but when you mix them together like that. Now, right here, now track with me. I'm going to just do some straight up and down strokes like this. Here's a question for you. How many blank canvases do you normally stash away at a time? Ones that are underpainted, undercoated? We probably have 40. 40 ready to go. Yeah. At a moment's notice. Well, we, we do, that's what we do with the extra paint. Yep. Now, just take your finger and do this. So that sort of smudge that out, all right? Okay. That was easy. Now, we're going to come into our water like this. And um, just using the same same brush we're going to put our water in and i'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue now on the brush like that you see that i'm not rinsing anything so i want a little bit darker on the edges and everything's going up and down like that now this is really f some fun easy painting because when you're putting in the color like this if you keep in mind that we want it a little bit darker as we come forward and then just get some more of this color down in here like that big like brush strokes like that now as we come over to this side let's get some Payne's gray because remember Payne's gray is what ultramarine blue and black so we'll just put some Payne's gray right up in here kind of overlap that some Payne's gray over here on this corner Okay. Let's see when he printed the, there. You go. So something like about like this. Now instead of now wipe the brush off. Not not no water. A little bit of ultramarine blue, right on top of that. I see what I just did. A little bit of ultramarine blue right on top of that. Kind of that edge, right? Now a little bit of this thalo blue color. Just streak it. Just use your streak like that. Use that angle brush, streak it. Okay. Then you can take a little bit of white paint you're with me on the brush. Barely touch it. Put it on. Wipe, tap it off. Just do a few streaks like that. Barely touch it. So that the blue shows through. You can use the edge of your angle brush a couple places. A little bit of white and ultramarine blue. Maybe a couple of that colors in there too. But again, I don't want you to overpaint this. You could overthink this really quickly. And you know, I don't want you to do that. Okay. All right. They're saying there's your water. Um, 
maybe I'll do another layer of the dark right here on the sides come up here like that tap in some dark remember I told you where you'd see it but not back here because that'll bring your eye back so don't put the dark back here you can put it you can put a little bit of this dark using the same brush just use the corner and say here's a little bit of a dark bank here right and then you've got a little bit let's take a little brown with that too some some a uh, little bit of burnt umber and black right like that I'm just going to say that there's a little bit of this dark edge up here too we'll put a little bit of that brown with it it almost looks like you're looking at a big cavern oh doesn't it yeah the way it's done I mean it's got some real depth to it doesn't it yeah. when you're doing this it's kind of cool yeah okay now now I'm going to rinse the brush now I'm really rinsing the brush because why because we've got blue all over it all right now yeah it is it's it really is um like a deep cavern okay so if we took some yellow oxide and said that and a little bit of burnt umber like that came over here like that made this sort of brown color like that burnt umber yellow oxide and came up here like this see how I'm curving the brush I'm going to come up here and say that there's our land area just kind of like the top of the letter M the brush stroke I'm using now you guys next week John and I will be in Pennsylvania teaching a retreat uh, with Cinnamon this is her show we um, are, we went last year and we're doing it again this year I guess I get to see tent this time she's coming right that's how rumor has it rumor has it that she's coming all right and I'm just going to I'm here and then I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber for this part here just as I come forward here I'm going to paint this with a little bit of burnt umber because I want that kind of as an underpainting for this front one and you're going that was easy yeah then back here with a little white on the brush with the yellow oxide so we're going to lighten this one we got the burnt umber on the brush so we sort of grade this and we're going to say this is a the back um, the back part of our um, it's as far back as we're going was is with this all right I might just put a little white with this and lighten this up right here too there you go all right so that's that's what we painted so far and that wasn't that wasn't hard yeah was it come on you guys was that hard it was not hard at all it wasn't hard yeah no. I could do it nothing to it and in the meantime this is dried wow that yeah, is so cool. how, how did that do that i know dude it's just it's like <laughs> a dude moment isn't it like dude it dried okay all right so then what happens to this brush nothing um we'll just put it in water i would love to just stop by the retreat to meet you guys what's that brenda, brenda wants to just stop by and meet us or well, yeah, you can, and, and on, on, day, on Friday, Friday uh, anybody that's close to the Poconos in Pennsylvania, they're having a, a like a, a an open house, thing. an open house with snacks and goodies, and and a chance to meet every cinema night. So you can, you don't have to pay to come; it's free. Uh, so that would be a week from Friday, um, uh, on the Poconos. And if you want to know some directions on how to get there, you got to you don't, you want to drive and come say hi to us. John and I will hang I'm out sure and about. not go home till we get a chance to. To get a chance to meet you, and I'd love to anybody that can come to that. That would be great fun. All right. Just can go to the artsherpa.com and use their contact to get more information on that. All right. So we're there will not be a live show when we're in the Poconos. No, we can't can't do one, and yeah. You can't go there and teach and and entertain and. All right. So now what we want next is some white. And here's my D brush. This is the brush okay this is a D number eight by Raphael and I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow oxide and a tiny bit of the, um, the marigold and I'm gonna that's pretty bright okay so if I take a tiny bit of burnt umber and add to that I just want to tone that down just a hair 
I have a little cad orange in there too. There you go. That's the color I want, yeah? Right like that. Now, we're going to say with me that you know you've got some trees coming up here. So we're not going to go, we're going to go here. Let's just, we're going to do the brush like this. And we're going to apply leaves, turning it over and doing like that. Okay. Now we get up to the top, we're going to make little tiny brush strokes and imply that over here, doop doop doop, we're going to say there might be a little branch, something here. And uh, leave a lot of, let a lot of air through your leaves. Don't get this too uh, full like that. Now, as we come further down, like toward here, we're going to have a little bit more color. Kind of like this X pattern. And I want to keep it pretty much closed. I don't want to get much further than about a fourth of this in here like that. Then I'm going to take a little bit of cad red medium and add some color up here like that using just the side of my brush and suggesting that there's some some color going on here like that. And maybe there's some magenta here somewhere. Let's Let's come on down here like this and say we're just overlapping, saying there's a little bit of magenta, keeping it kind of on the right hand side. Okay, and I want to come down a little further in here. And then I want a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue right up in here, like that. Not talking too much about that, but right up in here, we're going to say there's some ultramarine blue. And uh, that's kind of it. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of it. That's what we're doing. That's it. I know, I know it's very anticlimactic, right? So I'm going to rinse all that off, and I want the same kind of thing, but what I want to do is take some white paint in that same color that we just did here, but a little bit lighter. And I'm going to say I've got some little trees over here. They're coming in like this. And I'm going to say this is some background trees way back here. All right, like that. Maybe up here a little bit. We're going to say some trees. Okay. And let's see, where else could we put that? Um, let's get a little bit of yellow oxide and marigold together. And we're going to say that there's a tree, like right, right there. Okay. So we're going to put the... Um, Connect the dots, don't do polka dots, but we're going to say right up in here, there's our background tree, kind of overlapping things. We're going to come right down into here. This is what we can do in the background pretty easily, okay? Doop, doop. Okay, so there's a tree there. All right, now that's kind of what you can do with a big brush. Hey, let's give Robin a big thank you for the donation that came in through PayPal. Huh? And she has Did a ticket you? in the fishbowl. This is our last month of this quarter. And these, we have the original Ginger Cooks non-tutorials up for grab. I know. That is Did exciting. Do you know where they are? Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't think I have them sitting behind me right now. Oh, of course not. Let me get up, my queen. I'm just sitting John's over here gonna doing get nothing. Up. While he's doing that, we're going to keep doing the background. We're going we're gonna to get down to a smaller brush. If you had a bright brush, that's okay. Here's a bright brush is one that's not an angle. Um, kind of a small one. This is an angle. I will use the angle if you don't have one. That's all right. I'm going to take white and uh, magenta and a little orange color. A little bit, little bit of magenta. So I want sort of a peach color, right? And some white with it. Okay. I might come over here like this and tap that color here. But I also want to come up here and suggest that this, we've got a little bit of a tree. Just using the corner of the brush, we've got a little bit of a tree right here. And um, I, I want some of this color here, like that. And um, let's take a little bit of uh, cadmium orange and white. Okay. Come on down in here like that. Let's say that there's this color in here. So we're just going to layer in some little tiny colors like that. Yeah. 
Oh, that worked pretty good, didn't it? Um, could we just get a little bit of um, CAD red light, maybe, and intensify that? There's a few ones like in here, like that, just a little bit brighter down in here. Like that. Anything over here? Well, we could add some of these colors over here, too. I always ask to ask myself, where else can I put that color? All right. All right. Now, as long as I'm doing that, okay, um, I, I, instead of drawing, I'm just letting this sit, right? So w what I know for sure is that I know I want a little bit of, of the uh, thalo blue here. So I'm going to just come down here with a little bit, few, few more little bits of strong color in our water. Just second coat right here like that. Maybe a few more streaks coming down here like that. A little bit of phthalo blue. Here, let's just put a little shadow on here like that. Okay, so it kind of intensified the water. That worked. And I know I want a little bit of blue in here. Um, I'm just going to tap in some blue here like that and not talk about it too much. I would advise you to dry this only in the sense that... Um, blue and orange kind of make brown so if that's too wet you'll get something kind of browner than you want it right now as long as I'm here I might come along here like this on my background this is my next color and the brush is sort of damp and I'm just gonna just suggest a little bit of something back here like that a little bit deeper than I had it before acrylics dry darker so I tend to err on the side of it ought it could be lighter right okay so you're thinking wow we haven't even done the birch trees yet but we've got some depth don't we so remember how last week we did a little stomping what we're going to do this time is we're going to do some deliberate brush strokes going this way now some of you i tried to explain this last week when we did the stomping and some of you still got the brush strokes going in the wrong direction and it makes it look like your your board <laughs> is going uphill because you didn't do it level so we're going to do these level that would be straight across and i want to have white and um, yellow oxide let's just get enough of that paint over here where um, i want to get some in my mixing here like that so all right, so what are we doing? Kind of going like the Morse code. We're dashing it like this. We're going to do that. Just don't want white. Well, I guess I could have some, but oh, and let some of the darker brown show through like that. Yes and yes. Um, we're going to go this way with it. Maybe a little bit of yellow oxide with this. Brighten this up as we come forward in here. Huh, that's a little bright. Let's put some orange with that. Okay, there, that's better. See, we're gonna come in here like that with these colors and everything is just gonna go straight across. Yes and yes. And try to mix a few, like the brighter colors are gonna be kind of in front. Don't be afraid to go outside the lines on your, um, on your little bits of land but we know that we want it pretty bright back here like that. And it's gonna come in here like that and we're just gonna say this is where we're putting in our, can be just yellow oxide really. And even a little bit of brown and, and, and um, like a burnt sienna color. If you do a little orange and brown together, you can make a kind of a burnt sienna color and you can put some of that in there too. But uh, really, we're just talking about some kind of darker browns in here like that. And we'll just keep pulling in these colors. Brighter colors being in front. Okay, everybody's with me so far? 
Yeah, anybody not with me? And that I'm, am I not going too fast? Am I? Uh, you know, I can't see their paperwork now. I don't know how they're you doing. You don't know. Anybody don't know. think I'm going too fast for you? You just let us know. You just let us know. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be able to read in five minutes. Slight delay. What happened? What are you talking about? <clears throat> There's a sort of delay between when we talk, when they hear, when they respond. Are you paying attention to this whole thing here? Well, as best I can, John. As <laughs> best I can. Hey, let's thank Judy W. for the donation that came in through PayPal. And she, too, has a ticket in the fishbowl. Oh, my god! Your paintings are next to you. We need to do a little dry time okay, there. My so I'm going to be doing some driving, drying pretty quick here. You'll be driving? No, no. Drying, no driving. Drying, mm -hmm. drying, drying pretty quick. But um, I want to come up here with a little bit of this light color of my leaves up here like that. Just uh, and I think I had some sort of you do you guys know how to make peach right yellow cad red and white you guys know how to do that right and white makes a peach color everybody remembers that yeah I do me too I remember that do you think it real we should have a little pop if you quiz. Want more pink you could add a little magenta and uh, then you'd have it just slightly pink. You'd come up here like that, add a few of these, that little color up in here if you wanted, maybe even over here. And then would we put any on the ground? Not back there, but we could put, I think I'd put something a little brighter here on the ground in front, but we'll do that later. All right, so while this is drying, because we want to put our trees in, okay? So we're going to let this dry, but you can see how very simple this is, right? Okay, I'm going to put that away. Let me just show you guys. Uh, for those who want to thank everybody uh, who's been supporting us, and it's, uh, I, it's been a challenge for everybody this year, and we appreciate it very much. We know things are um, certainly challenging for us, and I know they are for everybody, so we thank you very much for that. This is one of my original pieces. There's no tutorial for that. This is um, when you talk about the fish pool, every, everybody that donated, at least for every $25 that they donated, even if they did five one time and ten another, right? It uh, through into the, um, not on YouTube, but on the, in the Academy. Yes, right. John? Yeah. You get either right, through so Stripe you, or through you PayPal. Know, you know, either through Stripe or um, PayPal or something. Um, you you have a ch one drawing, one ticket to the fish bowl. You probably saw us do us last week. And we've never done total original pieces before. The last week there was one. We, I'd forgotten it was. Um, the, the flower vase was a totally original piece. Um, anyway, this, um, this lock is one of my favorites. I've got, I've got paintings of locks all over my suitcases uh, because I think it sounded cool. I just love all the colors in this. Um, and I know some of you have just said that you really, really <laughs> like this. These would like a tutorial for this with the, um, the this old fishing village with the uh, no, there's birds and everything, right? And then and these were all done when we were on uh, on our trip. We've got a um, little flower shop, uh, which is uh, which I think is really fun and nice. And then here's the companions flower shop and cafe cafe this is a cafe and the other was a flower shop so those are the four paintings that we have for um that will be uh we'll do the drawings for and the last the last day of this august is uh it's the last for, the, for this quarter for this quarter okay yes and yes yes and yes i i feel like that's mostly dry well, Lorraine Mostly. asked me to send Lorraine from Janice. She What's asked, that? <coughs> Janie says, Lorraine from Salva asked to me to pass on her love and, and love you all and hello. She's at her summer home that doesn't have good internet, so she can't watch us live. Oh, uh, you know, Lorraine lives in Malta. And uh, listen, this lady's got the most amazing art studio. It's her build. It's like the building's like 400 years old or something. It's this little white stucco box of a building on right on uh, in this little cute village on the main part of the um, I don't want to say canal, but on the ocean, or the harbor. Yeah. And she had they, she has she paints there, and it's just she's got the dream studio, you guys. She absolutely does. 
All right, we got to meet Lorraine last year in Spain. All right, so when we're talking about doing trees and so forth, right? Um, <coughs> one thing you can do now, the reason I like angle brushes is because I can get a very good straight line with them and I don't have to do much. So as long as it's, it's pretty sharp, if I take, for instance, white paint and um, I know I want some trees coming up here like this. See that? I don't have to... I can imply that there's trees back here without doing much of anything, yeah? And um, if I wanted to say that there's some trees coming up back here, you know I had to have this darker before that could happen. I knew that. And I'm going to say there's some trees in the background. You see that we got some real depth in here without having to do much. Now I've got a tree that starts here and comes up about here. And I'm just going to take the uh, white paint. And this wasn't totally dry where I'm putting the tree. But right now I'm just putting it in, so that's all right. That's my first tree, and I've got one that I want back here. And again, I'm just using white paint at this point. I've got one that's coming up through here, like that. And let's get some Payne's Gray, because as we, get, as we go up here like this, now make sure, if you're going to do this, make sure it's very dry, so that if you end up with a tree you're not totally crazy about, you know what you can do. You can just I'm just going to take some of my brush like this sideways like this and just pull it sideways. There you go. Let's just paint gray here. And here's the back one like this. doesn't have to be all the way up, right? And then the next one here, it's on this little peninsula right here, and it's got to come up here. So we're going to we're going to draw it all the way up. Make that the tallest one. All right. Now, I want it wider, and that's the easiest thing to do is start with that. Now we're going to turn it sideways, turn the painting sideways, and I'm going to thicken this tree like this. There you go, and I'm just going to pull it, do a bright brush with this too. Okay, and as, you're, um, as you come up, it's going to get thinner. So you don't want it to taper too fast, but you know that you want it thicker at the bottom. Yes and yes. Now that's one of the tree secrets of doing a tree, is having a good uh, brush and being able to just imply the tree without having to do it, um, without having to draw too much. So again, we're going to do this like this. Again, having a good uh, a nice uh, wide, um, well, having a brush with a good point on it, I guess that's what I would tell you to do, right? So, okay, so we, we know we like that, right? Well, I think we do. Don't we like it? That's I'm it. loving it. I think it's looking great. All right, now, these ones, we're going to just do something a little different with. We're going to say that I know I want this tree to stop here, okay? I want this tree to stop right here, okay? And I want it to start here. So, and it's got a kind of curve like that. So maybe it would be easier to just, you know, draw it in. Maybe that would be easier for you to draw it in. But um, you can, for instance, Did I want it to? 
Okay, so this is where, how wide, wide I want it to be. So I want this tree right here. Now, using the same technique, just going to pull and I'm getting, let's take a little brown on that too now, let's add a little brown to that as we come up. All the way off the canvas. Alright, so that's tree number one. Now I've got one here that's going to end up here. And I need it to end up here, here, and here. So you're doing a dotted line tree first. Yeah, I think to me that's the easiest way to do it, is to just put some dotted lines. That way you're not getting it totally straight it's these a little bit crooked but you know it's not a straight line it's not a noodle so you've got to watch your curves on these things and um, hey let's give Jules a thanks for her donation that came in through PayPal She's oh got Jules thank you so much a ticket or two in the fishbowl has been added for her. Yeah. Um, all right. Now we know that this tree is going to be here. It's ended up right like this. All right. So that, I mean, that's pretty wide at the base. Take a little brown to that. The paint's gray. Like. I want it a little bit wider here on the bottom, down here like this. We're going to widen it this widen it this way. Yes and yes, see what we did. Okay. Now uh, we got one more, a little narrower one here. That's going to come here and just do that. Okay. So let's let's just put that one. That's a very skinny little tree. We're not going to talk too much about him. Take a little bit of the ultramarine blue on this one. I'll put a little bit of ultramarine blue on this one too. Want this one wider at the base. Okay, I didn't really want that, but it won't hurt. It's a little bit of ultramarine blue here, a little bit of Payne's gray. Still working on the dark colors. All right, so. I would like this top one to be a little thinner than I have it, this one I just did. So I'm just going to take some clean paint and just clean brush and water. I'm going to erase that. Rinse, wipe, swipe. So just we'll, we'll, I'm going to skinny this tree up right here. All right, there you go. Now. So that worked, right? Um, the next step we've got to do, okay, is just take a little bit of magenta and burnt umber and just sit there and say, let's do something. Let's put some streaks in here like that. 
in our water. Let's take a little bit more of the um, Payne's Gray and pull it. Let's just something down like that. Let's just imply that there's some streaks on these here like that. You're not really going to see these reflections, but we might see a little bit of reflections coming down here like that. And here like that. The same thing here. Let's do that. I think I could make this a little bit thicker up here. So rather than paint your tree, how you can get in trouble when you're doing your trees is just let them expand as you grow go up. Don't try to um, um, don't try to, to paint them as thick as you want them to be the whole time. You don't want to do that. Okay. So I know that I want some yellow oxide, a little bit of that cadmium orange color, and I want something in here like in this tree in here like that. Maybe something like this. Take a little bit of the white color. Because I know I've got, in between these trees, I've got some brighter colors. I can add that. Um, I could add some uh, cad red medium to stuff but um, in the background, but I still have to... Um, You know, add the uh, palette knife work on my trees. So um, rather than going too far with this, I'm just going to go ahead and um, dry it. We'll take a minute and just dry it, okay, John? Ooh, oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, oh but my. you just have to dry it. <laughs> There's only so much you can do, and uh... you have to dry it. Hold on a second. I guess I'm just going to have to silent us when you get ready well, to Well, you know what? Everybody can just suck it up and we'll just try it. I don't care, right? Just gonna oh, take a I like your attitude, Missy. That's right. You can all listen to the air dryer. Come on. We just got to dry it. Because if you don't dry your paintings, then you have a hot mess, and then you're all mad at me, right? I didn't, she didn't dry hers. Okay. Ready? Dry it. There, see, that wasn't painful. Didn't take very long, huh? I muted All right, it. Now I've got a little palette knife like this, and I'm going to take some white paint, flatten it out, flatten out the paint. Then I'm going to scrape it up just on this part of the knife. All right, and I'm going to turn my painting probably this way for this tree. And I'm coming right here on the end, make sure that the knife is nice and flat. With the paint, I just want it on the edge. All right. I'm going to put, put it and pull. And you only do a little bit at a time. Okay. So the trick is you've got to flatten out the paint. It's very important. People understand this palette knife work is key. You have to flatten out the paint. Start with a, a, a clean knife. And uh, pull the paint towards you. Start at the edge. Okay. Now I got a little bit of um, orange on there, but I don't really mind that. So it's all right; doesn't matter. 
Put a little bit of blue with that though. Kind of put just kind of make this more of a light blue color. Barely touch it. Allow some of the dark of the tree to show through. Okay. Yeah, they look like birch trees. Well, they do, but then then where, where people lose it, John, is that they um. I've got to get my stuff that's falling all over the floor here. <laughs> um, is that they don't understand about wiping that knife off. Let's come back here with a little bit of the uh, of the um. um the black color, okay. It's never, nothing is ever just one color. Flatten everything out. It's layered on. See what I mean? There you go. You see how that those trees are just a little bit different than what you thought, right? So let's start with the we'll start with the white paint on this one. Again, I gotta turn it this way. Start at the edge and pull it forward. Try not to go all the way across. Okay, if you can. Sometimes you want to, and sometimes you want to leave some. And we keep telling you that nothing is ever just one color. And you may want to dry in between. If you're getting, if this is getting away from you, you may want to dry in between your. Uh, what you're what you're doing let's thank Sandra for her donation that came in through PayPal oh, thank you very much okay now do you see do you see okay you flip me around again right so I want just a dry spot on here like this. So I'm mostly white. Okay. Just on the edge of here, right? Now we'll do the other one. I'll do this one. Now another knife you can do this with if you don't have a little one is one of these like this, the Bob Ross style knife. But again, you've got you're talking about the paint just on the tip on the edge. Flatten it out, and then scrape. See, that's all the paint you want. Is that's where you want it. And then what you can do is turn it around this way. Start with maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue and some of that Payne's gray color. And on this side, you want to bring it back. Now, 
notice that there are breaks in the color. You see that? Um, absolutely breaks in the color of your of your trees. So if I'm saying that I want um, barely touching this. You get to practice on something because nothing nothing will ruin a painting faster than doing the than doing this and then having the smear everywhere okay but notice how we're able to get these birch looking trees um, pretty effectively you can even do very straight lines with these like for instance That. Just using a palette knife like that, you, not knife like that, you can get some very straight lines. Now, what I want to do is skin this over for a minute uh, with the hair dryer, and then I'll finish this up. What do you think, John? Well, I think you're well on your way. I mean, I think you guys probably thought it was going to be a lot more complicated than that, but it really isn't. It's a really simple way to do birch trees, but um, um, but very let's effective. Let's just dry that real quick. This is where you can come in with a with a small brush now and do sort of some repair work. I don't know if repair is the right word, but for instance, I know that I want this to be a little darker right here. So I can take my brush and do that. Maybe add a little bit of light blue somewhere. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of um, maybe whitening up a little spot somewhere so your trees are a bit brighter than you had them originally. See, that's too much blue on the brush for me to ever go into white paint and get that. So let's try that again. So let's say I wanted this a little bit wider. I could do that. All right, but I'm pretty happy with those. I mean, I think that I think those look very nice. Um, come next to one if you need to skinny it up a little bit, something like that. You can use your background colors to do that. Um, so just back up in here like that. You need a little bit more of a contrast. You can come back here now with your other colors. Remember your background colors for the sky and everything. And you can come back up in here and just say that you've got that. Or maybe even some bright, bright yellow like that. It's just a little tiny. Some leaves. And then what if you took some kind of cad yellow medium 
and came up here like that and came across some of these trees like that just said there was some bright something bright right here because remember I said well the bright brighter colors will put in front maybe a few bright ones in front um, don't be afraid to start layering in the, all the little fun leaves like that I want to say that this this uh, bottom of this tree I want a little darker like this let's just add again for those of you who want to be a little more advanced you can I would say take a moment and study birch trees and understand what you're painting Sometimes these black lines go all the way across. These little bits of, um, sometimes there's just a little nub. So again, don't get too, don't get too much, but I mean, I think that's pretty good right there. Now, I want to take some of this cad red maybe and put some, well, I'll say cad red medium I think is probably better. Let's just put some bright leaves coming up this way down that way and into the water okay here and then maybe up in here like that we got something brighter do so how much brighter do I want any of this oh my goodness look at all the paint on that flatten out your brush let's say I want something brighter up in here across these just out here a little bit right let's Don't give get... Sophia a thank you for her donation it came in through PayPal thank you Steffi thank you very much does the hearts and other emojis give promotion to this lesson? Not that we know of. Not that we know of, but we, we appreciate it. I'm glad you're liking the lesson. Um, uh, let's see, I'm well, we're assuming you like the lesson. I'm going to just change brushes because I can't get, the, can't get the blue off of that brush anymore, and I need something cleaner. So I wanted that little bit of a peach color back here. It wasn't really bright enough. So uh, it dried. It usually acrylics dried darker, but this one didn't. So all right, and make sure that we've got something coming up here like that on these trees, like so. Yes and yes. And uh, every time I turn around, I'm looking for something else. I want something a little darker right there. Maybe a little ultramarine blue. I'm going to just pull some shadows down here in the water. Like that. Let's take a little bit of the white now and just kind of do a couple of lighter streaks. This is where you can kind of just fine tune the water a little bit. White and phthalo blue is very pretty. You can just kind of something a little bit lighter right here. We're not trying to get too crazy with you with the reflections like that. So don't don't panic, okay? Just if you get too much, just just cover it up. All right. Now, what we want to do next is have the leaves going across the water, okay? What do you mean? Well, in other words, if you want that leaves have to be floating. If you have a leaf coming down, John, for instance, if you have a little leaf coming down straight down like this, they're dropping. Okay, okay gotcha. That's dropping. If they've hit the ground already, they're floating. So that means they're going this way, like oh. Morse code across your lake. The dots and dashes. Bigger in the front. Okay, and then, but don't get too carried away, but bigger in the front, a little brighter in the front. But in the back, you can just sort of have an off-white color, like back here, like this, even whiter than that. That's why we know that this is, um, make them real skinny in the back. And then as they come forward, you can make them a little bit bigger. But you come across like that. You 
Now we put some brighter ones here. Notice that keeping all the bright colors in the front, you can have a few colors of surprise, like a cad yellow light or something, but don't go too nuts with the yellow because that kind of can take away from it. The yellow records brighter than white. Yeah, so, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yellow does record, record lighter than white. And I want something a little bit lighter across the top of this, on top of these back here like that on your peninsula. Let's give Phyllis a super big thank you for her donation that came in through PayPal. <gasps> it will truly make a difference. And it really will. helps out a lot. Thank you, Miss Phyllis. Thank you very much. And I hope that Miss Phyllis that you've gotten um that you got some that you've found that there's a a fun way to do, you know, birch trees. And uh, you can just use a brush, too. You don't have to have a palette knife. See how I'm coming back and kind of playing with those a little bit. But and I think I know I want a dark burnt umber and ultramarine, and, and ultramarine blue make a nice dark color. Maybe I'll just say I want something dark in here up in this area. For any of the um, selected people from the last drawing we had in the fishbowl last week they were shipped out today oh <gasps> he did he shipped everybody's out you guys i know it's unbelievable i appreciate your patience it took me a while to find all our components to put the shipping department back together again but oh yeah because you know what happened was when and, and this isn't ca causing blame not blaming anybody all right just making it that just, clear but when changed cinnamon and john were living with us and the kids the room that we normally would use for shipping was commandeered. It was commandeered for one of the kids to sleep in. And John had to just kind of find all his stuff again. I'm adding just a little bit of purple in here, too. Can't go wrong with purple. Well, I've never felt that you can, right? And Not just at a little all. bit of this purple in here in the leaves, like that. And I want to come clear off the canvas with like a couple of up here, here like this like that and um, maybe some branches but I kind of like our branches though don't you I think the branches look good you just can't beat these angle brushes for just you know a good I make sure that this this um, this tree here is I want a little bit of blue on these, too, because we're taking artistic license with these, yes and yes. So therefore, I wanted a little blue or a little bit of purple color on a tree. I could do that. And see? Wow, you guys, I mean... I have to admit that this was, was pretty easy. Yes and yes? A lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I think that, you know, if you're talking about, you know, some colors and... I thought we did... I thought we got pretty good with the colors. And... Uh, I don't want to over, I don't want to overdo it either. So uh, let's see, some some cadmium orange here. Let's thank Sharon for her donation that came in. Our fish bowl is filling up. Thanks, you guys. So nice, and we so appreciate it. And I want to thank um, um, Andrew last week. I didn't get to you know for his donation. If he's watching today, um, I hope he's going to consider doing this one too. This needs this. to be paint, painted big. Hope he'll paint paint this, but big. try this little first and see what happens. But then go big. 
we're doing enough color behind the trees so they sort of stand out see what I'm doing so that you can kind of easily see them and then I want some lighter color just a few lighter color leaves like that in the front And there you have it. So before I do one last thing to this, I'm going to take a moment, put this up here. I want to show you those T-shirts before I forget. Oh, you're going to show the, find uh, me the nine by twelve frame for this too, right? Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Because I'm not doing anything else over here. Yeah. So what I want to show you, make sure I don't have anything on here that's going to get dirty, because I well, I'm the one that has to wear it, but still. Um, I wanted you to see my bunny T-shirts that came. I'm going to be wearing these at the retreat. You guys. Man. Look at that. It says, Art, my rabbit hole to another world. Do you love that? <laughs> Art, my rabbit hole to another world. So there's one t-shirt. Mm. Let me just cover the paint up just because I hate to have accidents. I got the light blue and then we did you have a dark blue and a, a black dark blue. blue. Uh, normally I never wear light blue shirts because my, you know, at the minute I eat, I've spilled it on it. My <laughs> favorite, because you know me, the, my favorites are the I love this rabbit hole to another world in black and then we've got this one and there's other colors available these are the ones that I personally bought for me uh, because who doesn't love a rabbit in blue so then it goes with my cell phone and cover and everything so you guys I had to show you that because that's way cool and the last thing I need to show you is uh, in the Academy we're getting uh, this was the uh, gallery wrap one of the New Zealand flowers inspired by our trip to New Zealand. That will be released later this week. Um, so I hope that, uh, you know, I'll be, even though I'll be working next week in the retreat all week with its people, I will be checking my Facebook page at night. So if you post anything, I'll try to comment on it. And, um, uh, and then we'll be back um, Monday if we're not back in time because we, it's a two and a half hour drive up to Pennsylvania. So if we don't two and a half hour drive. How right, are two you? And a half, two and a half day drives. <laughs> two day, two and a half days up there. I can't even fly that fast. Two and a half days up there. So, like for instance, if we'll get up there like Saturday, we're leaving Friday. We'll get up there Saturday, late Saturday afternoon, and we'll leave Friday afternoon. And may or may not be back in time to do another live show. But we've got a fabulous uh, tutorial that we'll be filming this week. If we have to do a premiere, you're going to love it. And the, um, I think it will be really fun. But this was uh, this is a uh, this was for um, just a great way. If you like all the colors, you see you notice that, for instance, if you look at my painting here, I like these kind of colors, and you'll see <laughs> this pretty so. much pretty much everything I do. See, it almost goes here, doesn't it? I mean, come on, just that you could almost just do this, right? Yep. Right? Yes? Yeah, you could. Cut right into it. Bam. I mean, if your stuff looks so hard, I never want to do it. No, no, it isn't hard. It isn't hard. Maybe I'm not explaining it well. I'm trying to explain it better. You found me the frame? Yeah. Did you see me get up? No. Oh, well, then I better try it again. Hey, John, where's the frame? Where's that? Show the frame with this. Um, I think that this was a pretty easy um, lesson. Once, once you saw how we did it, yes and yes. Um, and I hope you'll subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already. And if you haven't done the poll, I really want to know about the poll because this one lady wrote and said she was very annoyed with us because we... Um, these are Posca pens and you can't beat those for just adding stuff, right? Um... She said, because we weren't doing the old EGs enough. And then another person wrote me and said that they just couldn't believe I would refer to anybody as magnificent as Odeon as an old EG and I was the most disrespectful person and couldn't believe and listen to another thing I said. So I understand we can't please everybody. I get that, right? But we really want people to be happy. We want, you know, we basically, you've kind of got it. I can teach you guys anything. I just want to teach things that everybody would really like and enjoy learning to paint. So, um, put a little white line right there because I think that's kind of nice. 
and uh, I'd say we were, I'd say we were in good shape, wouldn't you? So I think this is exactly what I intended to paint, and just, and I hope that you, again, I hope you're subscribing to the channel. And uh, John's just mutt muttering around. We've had these all the time. Now he's just uh, so fun. I just love it. It's hard to get back into what we've been doing when we're gone because things get moved. And uh, we're still just finding things. Like, um, I guess that would be the best way to put it. We're still finding things, aren't we, John? Still searching for things. Yeah, and I'm seeing a couple things I want to do as long as we're doing that. I want something a little darker over on this edge. It's all right. It's all right. He found the frame. And this is good. We appreciate the fact that John found the frame. We're just making this a little bit darker right in here. Yes and yes? Did I miss anything? You didn't miss anything. All right. So I just wanted to make sure that we had that. All right. So, uh, you know, you paint something the second time, you always do it a little bit differently than the first time. But what do you guys think? Is that something you might enjoy painting? I hope so. Because I think we um, we captured the intent. It really is a, a fabulous way to paint birch trees and give them depth. And I think everybody, this is a great chat. No, fall's not that far away. We're just, uh, you know, I know we're still summer, but I think some of you guys are... Just around ready the corner. For, some of you guys are, are maybe maybe ready for fall. And do you remember I said that turquoise, blue, and orange are compliments? Everybody remembers that, right? Yes? They Absolutely. do, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I took a little bit of turquoise blue like this, let's see. That, the thalo, that would be thalo blue, right? And white. Yeah, assuming I have some left, right? A little bit of yellow. Well, that makes nice like green. a turquoise color. Let me just do that. Oh, look places. what you did. It pops. I know. You're popping it, it just, now. It just did. I, I didn't want to do too much of that, but, you know, you have a little bit where there's an orange, and then there it is. So, small stuff. Okay. So, so the uh, poll results, we have 158 people vote. Yeah. Do you want to see more paintings done by the ODGs, the famous artists from yesteryear? Yeses is 88%, noes it's 12%. Okay. So I guess we won't do any more. We won't do more like this. We'll just do ODGs. It's fine. We don't mind. Uh, we like doing the ODGs. You can learn so much from them. Well, you do, don't you? Because they, they paint differently than you do. Well, they do. And they you might use a different color palette. <laughs> they, they definitely do that. All right. Well, we <laughs> enjoyed you coming. Thank you. Uh, um, appreciate your thoughts on this and the, leave it in the comments below. I read all your comments since it takes me a while to get back to answering them. Life happens, but... Um, life happens. Um, <laughs> yep, life happens. And, but you guys, be sure to be reading this. We had a great gazette today on, on perfectionism. And are you trying to be too perfect with your art? That's in the gazette. Sounds and, like uh, That's folders. a free publication we put out every Monday. And... Um, and also, uh, and we could not do it without the Tech Liz being there to yeah, tech really Liz, yeah. have that project up. Get the project done, and there's a lot of love and work that goes into that. And we appreciate. Well, I don't feedback. know how much love there is. There's a lot of words going back and forth between us as we're doing them. There's a lot of love and work that goes into those, <laughs> and I write the articles, and I think those are important too. So, all right, you guys, hang in there. Take care. We'll see you next. Well, not next week, but we'll see you. Uh, okay, uh, and, and you know when people say that, we see you. Do we actually see them? Bye, John. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone.